Hi, everyone. A major rock star says he will renounce his U.S. citizenship after Roe v. Wade was overturned. Okay, let's assume he actually does it. What does that mean, and what happens when he ends up changing his mind? That's coming up. But first, perjury. Some prominent figures on the left now accusing the newest members of the Supreme Court of that federal crime in the wake of Roe v. Wade being overturned. They say the now justices lied in their Senate confirmation hearings when asked about Roe. But when you listen to exactly what they said, as we will do in a minute, it's a very tough argument to make. Driving the push to punish Justices Gorsuch, uh, Kavanaugh, and Barrett, statements made by moderate Republicans, Susan Collins of Maine and Democrat Joe Manchin of West Virginia. On Friday, Manchin issued a statement saying in part that he was alarmed that Justices Gorsuch and Kavanaugh voted to overturn Roe after they, quote, testified under oath that they also believed Roe v. Wade was settled legal precedent. Collins took things a step further during an interview with the New York Times saying that Kavanaugh, quote, misled her during their meetings, telling her that he is a don't rock the boat kind of judge, according to notes provided to the Times. Florida Democratic Representative Charlie Crist, who was once the state's Republican governor, now again running for the seat, this time as a Democrat, went so far as to say that Kavanaugh and Gorsuch committed perjury during their confirmation hearings. It was a sentiment echoed by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi during the immediate aftermath of Friday's ruling. How about those justices coming before the senators and saying that they, they respected, sorry to say, the, the precedent of the court, that they respected the right of privacy in the Constitution of the United States? Did you hear that? Were they not telling the truth then? One of the loudest calls for Gorsuch and Kavanaugh to face consequences for these supposed lies came from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. If we allow Supreme Court nominees to lie under, earth, under oath and secure lifetime appointments to the highest court of the land and then issue issue without basis, if you read these opinions, issue without basis rulings that deeply undermine the human and civil rights of, of, the, of the majority of Americans, we must see that through. There must be consequences for such a deeply destabilizing action and hostile takeover of our democratic institutions. Now, before we dive into this, let's look at the facts how each of the three Trump-appointed justices answered questions about Roe during their hearings, starting with Amy Coney Barrett, discussing Roe as so-called super precedent, meaning a decision that would or should be even harder to overturn. People use super precedent differently. Okay. The way that it's used in the scholarship and the way that I was using it in the article that you're reading from was to define cases that are so well settled that no political actors and no people seriously push for their overruling. And I'm answering a lot of questions about Roe, which I think indicates that Roe doesn't fall in that category. And scholars across the spectrum say that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. She said it straight out there. It doesn't fall into that category for her. No lies there. Then there was now Justice Gorsuch. Roe versus Wade decided in 1973 is a precedent of the United States Supreme Court. It has been reaffirmed. The reliance interest considerations are important there. And all of the other factors that go into analyzing precedent have to be considered. It is a precedent of the United States Supreme Court. It was reaffirmed in Casey in 1992 and in several other cases. That is a factual statement of where things stood. It was precedent. It was reaffirmed. This is the game all nominees have been playing for 25 years in avoiding directly saying how they would rule. But Justice Kavanaugh's comments got the closest to the line. It is an important precedent of the Supreme Court. By it, I mean Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Been reaffirmed many times. Casey is precedent on precedent, which itself is an important factor to remember. Sure makes it sound like he's saying it wouldn't be overturned, but he doesn't say that. He's being lawyerly. 
and still framed it as analysis, not an assurance. Now, in retrospect, maybe it's a bit misleading, but it's not a lie. That's what perjury is. That's a criminal charge. You don't throw that phrase around unless you can prove it. It's a game perspective justices on both sides are now forced to play, saying that something is precedent, it's super precedent, or even settled law is not the same thing as saying that you wouldn't overturn that precedent in question. Lower courts have to follow the law, follow the precedent. The Supreme Court can set new precedents. And nothing the justices said was a promise to not change the law. And if they had made such a promise, that would have been inappropriate. Not only that, but a basic Google search would have made it abundantly clear where the justices stood on abortion even before they were nominated to the bench. Justice Barrett co-authored a 1998 Law Review article that said abortion is always immoral and signed on to two right-to-life advertisements against the Roe decision while she was on the faculty at Notre Dame Law School, both of which were widely reported on during her confirmation hearings. But not only that, Justice Barrett also cast two votes as an appeals court judge to reconsider rulings that blocked restrictions on abortion in Indiana. As an appeals court judge, Justice Gorsuch made clear he would have allowed then Utah Governor Gary Herbert to cut off funding for Planned Parenthood in that state. Now, that may not be the ultimate answer, but it sure provides an important clue. And prior to being nominated by President Trump, then Judge Kavanaugh praised Chief Justice William Rehnquist's dissent in Roe v. Wade during a 2017 event at the American Enterprise Institute. It's fair to say that Justice Rehnquist was not successful in convincing a majority of the justices in the context of abortion, either in Roe itself or in the later cases such as Casey, in the latter case perhaps because of stare decisis. But he was successful in stemming the general tide of freewheeling judicial creation of unenumerated rights that were not rooted in the nation's history and tradition. Look, if they cared so much about this issue, and Susan Collins and Joe Manchin, who was one of a handful of Democrats who voted for Gorsuch and the only Democrat to vote to confirm Kavanaugh and any other senator complaining about being misled by the justices should have done their homework. They have no one to blame but themselves. I get they want a scapegoat for their constituents who are mad, but claiming that the justices should be criminally charged for verbal gamesmanship that they're all enforced basically to engage in now is dangerous and destabilizing, I think even to suggest as much. Joining me now is someone who takes the other side on this, Benjamin Dixon, independent journalist and host of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. Thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate it. What do you think I'm getting wrong here? You know, I appreciate, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I think the question isn't so much about criminal perjury as much as the threat that these justices pose to the democracy and the Constitution that they swore to uphold, and the very long game that they played. Like, we, we can agree that perhaps they did not cross the legal line of perjury, but we can also have to admit that their wording and their phrasing and their intentionality was to make sure that they were not interrogated any further on issues of Roe versus Wade. They were evasive, and they did exactly what you said. They were extremely law lawyerly. However, the question is, is, do we sit back and allow that loophole for them to be able to get away with what they are doing here, which is carrying out a long-term plan to overthrow the entirety of modernity? Let me, let me ask you this. So I'm going to play you a, a piece of sound um, from Justice Kagan when she was being questioned in 2010 about some of the issues that conservatives care about. I want you to listen to her answers, and then I'm going to ask you about it. Mm -hmm. Is there any doubt uh, after the court's decision, Heller and McDonald, that the Second Amendment to the Constitution secures a fundamental right for an individual to own a firearm, use it for self-defense in their home? There is no doubt, Senator Leahy. That is binding precedent, entitled to all the respect uh, of binding precedent in, in, in any case. So that is settled law. She used the exact same language that they used. And so my question is, if she voted to overturn Heller, the big Second Amendment decision, would you and others be saying she's lying, she misled us, she should be charged with perjury? Oh, I wouldn't have to say it because you could 
very well assure yourself that the Republican Party will do that and run the entire gambit. Uh, like they but, will. But I'm asking about thing. hypocrisy. That's what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on the fact that she gave the exact same answers that they gave, and I would not be surprised if she would vote, if in an opportunity to do so, to overturn the Heller yeah. decision. Yeah, but I and I, while I very much appreciate this opportunity, I, I really can't see myself arguing that in this moment. When she does it, then we can address that. But what has been done has been an affront to the rights of women and so many other cases. So, and it's funny you played that particular clip because now they are saying that states have the right to determine uh, uh, a woman's right over their body as separate from well, – yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, look, I, I, look I've heard this argument, and, and I'm, I'm not defending the, the, the Dobbs decision here. Let me be very clear. But with that said, the, the legal argument is a different one, right, which is that there is a fundamental second amendment, they believe, a second amendment right that is enshrined in the Constitution. It says it. And the argument is that this isn't enshrined in the Constitution, and therefore the analysis is totally different. But I, I'm really trying to stay focused on this issue about people claiming that the justices lied in their nomination proceedings. And, and that's really my that focus here. Deceived. Would Sorry? you at least agree that they, they intentionally deceived for the purposes of skirting that question? And in a regular proceeding, a deposition, there would be some type of objection to get them to answer correctly, right? Or to get them answered a straight answer. They don't have the luxury of this during Senate proceedings, and I understand that. However, we can clearly see that their language was meant to deceive. And if other, if other justices are getting away with the same thing, then it is a problem. Well, I have no problem with hypocrisy here. I simply don't think that that is the most important issue at this moment because we haven't seen that hypocrisy uh, from the justices. Well, and it, again, I think that the, the problem is these confirmation hearings, right, that now all of these prospective justices are put into a position where it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a verbal game. It's about verbal dexterity right. where you try to avoid answering any questions. And, and my point is, I, Kavanaugh, as I said, came up to the line, but I don't think he crossed it. And I think that, look, I think it is, I think it is incredibly destabilizing to suggest that our, that our justices of the Supreme Court should be charged with perjury. That is not something that should be thrown around lightly, and it is being thrown around by, by some on the left, and I find that to be troubling which was the point of this discussion. But, Benjamin, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.